Welcome to Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax Ignition, a fighting game collaboration between Sega and Dengeki Bunko, developed by French Bread, the makers of Undernight Inbirth and Melty Blood. DFCI is a 2D fighter utilizing the SIS, with a rich resource system and simple movement options, making it easy to dive in and discover its underlying depth. The game itself has no built-in tutorial mode, so for this video, we're going to break down the basics of how to play the game and help give you a clear understanding of the game's mechanics to put your foot in the door of the game. Throughout this video, we'll be using numpad notation. A more detailed explanation can be found in the description. We'll also be using some common fighting game terminology and assume you'll have a passing understanding of fighting game concepts. DFCI has three primary attack buttons, A, B, and C. A, B, and C are used for your normals and specials, and button combinations are used for a variety of mechanics. S is your assist button used to call your assist. Each assist has a neutral version and a forward or back version. Assists are great for controlling space at neutral, creating offensive situations, or applying pressure on an opponent's wake up. Let's go over the on-screen elements. The life gauge, round timer, and round count are your classic binding aim elements while the trump card icon, support gauge, blast icon, and climax gauge show the availability of resources specific to DFCI. The climax gauge is your meter resource and maxes out at 5 bars. The game also indicates when a player is at a health deficit, which will come into play later. Movement in DFCI takes some common trends and builds on them with its own unique flair. You have your standard forward and back walk, as well as forward dash and back dash. Note that dash speed differs from character to character. Backdash and vulnerability starts on the first frame, but due to long recovery and a short invuln window, it isn't consistently reliable as a defensive tool. You can jump with 7, 8, or 9, and have one double jump, though some characters have additional air options, such as a triple jump or an air dash. Similar to Melty Blood, you can slightly alter your descent after a neutral jump, using 6 or 4. After jumping, you cannot block for the first 10 frames, so be sure to take the risks into account. Inputting 2 and then 8 or 9 quickly will allow you to super jump, which always has a forward trajectory. Super jumping can be a great way to cover lots of ground quickly. Recovery, or teching, is performed by holding A, B, or C. By holding a direction during your recovery, you will move in that direction. During an air tech, you are completely invulnerable until you reach the ground, but you lose that invulnerability if you choose to perform an action, such as pressing a button or double jumping. Every character can do a standard combination string by chaining normals of increasing button strength. Alternatively, the game also has an auto combo called Quick Combination, which ends in an EX move if you have one bar of meter. Extend Action is a charged version of a normal or special move performed by holding down the button and limited to certain characters and moves. Throw is performed by inputting forward or back with C in throw range. Attempting to throw outside of your throw range will cause a C normal to come out instead. You can't input a throw while dashing. You must first return a neutral or input back. Otherwise, you'll just get a C normal. The throw input allows you to tech throws, which also leaves you at frame advantage. Teching throws doesn't work while crouching, so be especially wary of throw attempts while crouch blocking. Impact skill and impact break are guard point attacks performed by inputting A plus B. Each character has a unique standing and crouching impact skill done by pressing 5AB and 2AB. These moves are typically strike attacks, but some characters, like Shizuo and Kurayukihime, have counters associated with their 2AB. Impact skills have guard point from their very first frame, making them a universal reversal option. Attacks that make contact of a guard point can be canceled into a variety of options, resulting in various clash interactions between players. Impact Break, performed with 4AB, is a universal overhead with a guard point at the apex of its animation. It's safe on block, but isn't easy to combo with unless you perform the follow-up. Pressing A, B, or C will trigger the follow-up, launching the opponent for an air combo. When performed immediately, the screen zooms in, and you're rewarded with no damage penalty, but pressing the follow-up late will result in increased scaling on the subsequent combo. The follow-up gives you much higher reward on hit, but is punishable on block. Every character can use an EX version of any of their special moves, performed by inputting A and B with the motion. EX moves cost 1 bar and increase your blast gauge by 10%. EX moves are unburstable and typically lead to a hard knockdown. 
TFCI has two types of universal supers, which cost two bars of meter, commonly referred to as damage supers and Ronbu. Damage supers are inputted with half circle forward and BC. Since they have no invincibility on startup, they're typically used for damage as a combo ender. Ronbu, performed with half circle back in BC, is typically a fully invincible rush super. It can be used as a reversal and fills 20% of your blast gauge. It does less damage than a damage super, but leaves you in a better position after the knockdown. During the startup of a super, you can spend a trump card to increase its damage. If you spend a trump card while already in a trump state, you will be forced out of the state. Consider the various pros and cons when deciding which super to use. Reflection action is the game's form of push block. It's performed by inputting two attack buttons while in block stun. Push blocking will use half a bar of meter. However, if you are at less than half a bar of meter, you are still able to push block. Push blocking is free for the player with less health. So, if you're losing a round, feel free to push block to your heart's content. As the name implies, the trump card is a mechanic that turns the tide of a battle in your favor, or can be used to close out a round. Trumps are powerful moves that can be cancelled from many attacks and grant temporary buffs to your character. Performing a trump will consume one trump card. Players start with two at the start of the game, which carry over from round to round. Losing a round grants one card, but you can never hold on to more than two at any time, so don't let them go to waste. Trumps behave in one of two ways, depending on the color of the icon, which differs depending on your character. Red trumps are the most common trump type. They typically are strike invincible, air unblockable, hit overhead, and are safe on block. They deal significant damage and are used aggressively in combos for extra damage and knockdown. Blue trumps are install trumps that give you a character-specific buff. It can be used offensively to extend combos and pressure, like a Roman cancel from Guilty Gear, or used defensively to analyze the situation like a chain shift from under Night in Birth. Both trump types are strike and projectile invincible, allowing them to be used in many reversal situations, but be aware that they are still vulnerable to throws. Regardless of version, after activating the trump card, your character gains bonus effects for its duration. You can jump cancel all normals, chain heavier normals into weaker ones, cancel into assists for free, call assists while airborne, and call assists without any animation. Blast is DFCI's form of burst, and it's performed by pressing A, B, and C at the same time. When blast is used, the blast gauge will slowly fill up until it is ready to use again. There are three versions of blast, depending on when you perform the input. Power up blast, combo blast, and escape blast. Power Up Blast occurs when performed at neutral and is the strongest blast type. It immediately grants one bar of meter and an additional bar if your blast hits the opponent. It's fully invincible on startup and grants you some temporary bonuses, such as increased attack and defense, health regen, and meter regen. Since EX moves and Rombu supers build the blast gauge, Power Blast can be a strong way to jumpstart your momentum by immediately giving you some meter to work with. Combo Blast occurs when performing a blast during a combo or attack. It immediately gives you one bar of meter and launches the opponent into an untackable and unburstable state for combo extensions. Holding forward will toss the opponent back, causing a wall bounce in the corner and granting a damage bonus. Combo Blast is also plus on block, making it a great way to extend your offense. Escape Blast is the final of the three and occurs when being attacked or in block stun. It's an invincible blast that pushes your opponent away and ends their combo or pressure, much like a burst. While it is a powerful defensive tool, Escape Blast comes with a brutal penalty to your blast gauge, as it will start to refill at a much slower rate than normal. Due to the drawbacks, it's advised to reserve Escape Blast for emergencies, as the other versions of Blast will allow you to play more proactively. Since many uses of meter refill your blast gauge, and blasts also help build meter, high-level DFCI play will often involve proactive usage of resources to maximize efficiency. At Character Select, you are given the option to pick a blast character. The character you choose won't impact gameplay, but their blast type will. The blast type you choose will enlarge the radius of that specific blast when performed. In between rounds, you are prompted to ignite your choice of your character, your blast character, or your support character. Igniting will boost different aspects of your gameplay, depending on which character you choose. Igniting the same character twice will add even more unique benefits. Potential is a temporary status effect, gained when fulfilling certain requirements. Entering potential is indicated by a small cut-in upon activation, along with the character's portrait flashing white. Every character has two potentials, a universal one and a character-specific one. 
Certain desists will grant you a third potential state, and you can be in multiple potential states at the same time. Universal Potential increases your damage output for a limited time, and is activated when you fall below 30% life. This is denoted by the health bar turning purple. If you are down a round, your damage output is further increased. Your health bar will change back to yellow to indicate the end of its duration. The character's unique potential has various effects, requirements, and restrictions. The effects range from increased damage and defense, faster assist recovery, or even lengthening your trump state. For example, once Kirito connects with 7 special moves, he activates his character potential, increasing his dual wield time by 10 seconds. Some assists have a support potential, and like the character specific potential, their activation requirements vary per assist. Support potentials are unique in that there is no limit on how many times they can be activated. For some characters, potential is essential for their game plan, so making use of it while it lasts is key to victory. And that wraps up our DFCI tutorial. For more details and in-depth strategy, check out the DFCI community guide linked in the description below. You can also give them a follow at Blast Select on Twitter and join their Discord. If you enjoyed this video, help us grow our channel by giving us a like, subscribing, or share it with a friend. Head over to the comments section and let us know what games you'd like us to cover next. Tech Chasers is a group focused on collaboration to create fully realized content. Whether you can edit, write, or simply have a great idea, reach out to us on Twitter if you are interested in being part of the team.